Uprisers, hi, it is Trisha LaCroix with Sacred Uprising Institute and Retreat. And today we are talking to Lori Green. Lori has talked to us about tr from tradition to truth. She talked uh, two weeks ago about uh, the labels of our life. And today she is going to be talking to us about expanding into one. And the one meaning one consciousness. So um, I am, so as we're waiting for Lori to jump on, I just wanted to uh, mention once again about our conference that is coming up. And our focus, hi Annette, the focus for our conference is, um, it's truly about infinite love within. It's the core of who you are. It, infinite love is your father, it is your mother. It is what, um, what hold on one second. Uh, infinite love is what you are made from it's where made of it's where you're from it's where we will go back to infinite love is everything it is all it is um what the universe is made of infinite love is what what our creator is love so for our conference it's really truly about getting back to infinite love because that's who you are and when you become love uh, there's a really loud uh why is that open? What does it sound yeah, like? Yeah, it's really loud. Um, so when you go back to infinite love, when you go back to infinite love, and when you become infinite love, you can call in anything that you want into your life. It's about abundance. It is about um, uh, transforming your life into heaven on earth. So please, um, if you can, Go, um, we'd love to have you come to our conference, but you can go to sacreduprising.com and there are many different uh, opportunities, many different price points for you to join our conference. You can either uh, come to the conference and there are many different price points based on what type of rooms you get. There is also where you can uh, pay for, hey Christy, live streaming of our conference. So go take a uh, look on sacreduprising.com and go subscribe to us on Instagram as well as on YouTube. Lori, you yes. look so different today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say once again, the light around you is going to transform people's lives just by hearing what you're saying and seeing the glow that's just beaming from you. And I would highly recommend after this video, you go and look at what and see what we're seeing because it, it's just amazing. <laughs> I've um, I've been very blessed to be friends with Lori for, I don't know, a year or two now. Yeah. I can't, it must be about a year, almost two years now. Yeah, I and so. yeah. yeah, and I've seen, like she has seen in me the transform, the transformation in me and how it continues to transform. But Lori has been going through this beautiful transformation yet again, taking her to a whole new level. And that level is truly oneness. It's the consciousness of oneness. And everything that we teach here on Sacred Uprising is the bridge to oneness. So um, with that, expanding into one. Yes. And when you think expand, one would think in our human minds, expand into one. No, we want to expand into two or three and four. <laughs> but no, one is where wholeness resides. One is where we're trying to get back to. So yes. I, love, I love the title. Yes. Um, thank you, Tricia. This is such a beautiful time uh, right now for so, so many of us. It's actually a beautiful time for everyone. Uh, it's just some of us are more aware than others right now because this is truly, truly happening on a global level, even for those who aren't yes. aware that it's happening. Uh, and that's the beauty of the divine. Um, so I'm so grateful for this platform to be able to talk about these things. Uh, and you're right, you know, when we think of expanding into one, I didn't even think about that, that for some people that might sound odd, because how do you expand into one, right? Uh, it sounds singular. Um, and yet, uh, this oneness is all things. So it contains everything. It's where we came from. Uh, and before this video, I was talking about that, that when babies come into this world, uh, they have this expansiveness about them. We are fascinated by babies. You see a baby, it's not a baby you know, that you don't know the parents, and yet you're drawn to this infant uh, to want to be in their presence. And uh, it is because of the expansiveness uh, that these infants bring into this world with them. They're already coming from that one. 
they're coming from that one consciousness, that one love, that one expansive place, right? And so we're drawn to that. And then what happens as we grow is that we are exposed to uh, the conditioning, we are exposed to the experiences, we are exposed to the things of the world. Uh, and so then we begin to contract and our hearts begin to be protected and they close. And we go through that first part of our life having that experience and we define ourselves and we label ourselves and we, we hold these identities that have been given to us societally uh, and we carry our woundedness and we have all of these experiences. And so then that causes us to contract uh, and to come inward and we lose that expansiveness about us. Uh, and so we then, at some point, uh, many of us, as have happened in the last several hundred years, <laughs> wake up to this, what's happening, uh, and realize that, oh my goodness, I've gotten away from who I was, and now I've got to learn to re-expand <laughs> back into the oneness that I came from. And so right. we're going to talk about that process of what that is, and how and why that even happens, like why this expansiveness is necessary. Uh, why do we have these experiences when we come into this world? Why do we lose that expansiveness? Uh, and what I have come to, and I want to, before I say anything else, I heard Dak say this and I was like, gosh, we are always all on the same page. Uh, and that is this, that when we speak, we are speaking from our experience. And that is all I can give you, is what my experience has been. And we all have different experiences. What I will tell you, though, is as you continue with your experience and you are authentic with that experience, then what happens is through this expansive process, other people come into your life who have had similar experiences to validate the experience for you in your own life. So I, I want to be clear that when I speak, I'm speaking from my experiences. Uh, and so the facts in this discussion are my facts because they're proven to me. Uh, whether they're the facts of another individual is for that individual to determine. Uh, and you well, it's like It's yeah. like what Dak said and what Dak and I talked about yesterday is that for every level of your life, there is truth for every yeah. level. Yeah. So you are speaking from your level of truth. And while it may not resonate with another, please don't discount it because it still is truth for a different level. Yes, precisely. And as I said to you before we even came on this video that for me right now, with what's happening, that is changing sometimes moment to moment for me. Right. I'm getting this different understanding sometimes moment to moment. Um, just this morning on my way in as I was thinking about the expansiveness and talking about it, and probably three or four weeks ago, uh, I heard this voice ask me a question. I was sitting in this space of love, uh, sitting there, right? And the voice said, but what's beyond that? What's beyond this? And I thought, there's something wow. beyond this. There's something beyond this. And as, I, as I'm sitting with it, you mentioned this mist, and I believe that's part of what that is, is this awareness now I, that I now have of the void, the void that exists, right? And void sounds awful and scary, but it's not. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, and in the Buddhist tradition, they've already figured that. I, did, I didn't even know this. Like, this is not a new concept. Uh, the Buddhist tradition speaks of the great void. Uh, and, and, and in that space of great void, that is the best, that is the most expansive place we can be. It's like being in the center of a, of a black star, uh, of a dark star, right? It's like being in the center there. That center to us appears dark and black and empty, but science has just determined that that actually contains the greatest amount of energy and that galaxies are birthed from that point. And right. this void is where all of that exists. It is everything and nothing all at the same time. It is where we come from. And so this expansive into one is, is ultimately the expansion uh, even into that. And so what happens is we move and we begin to expand. We begin to expand and we feel it. Suddenly uh, we recognize that uh, we're judgmental. We, we recognize that we have lived a life of separatism and we begin to recognize how that no longer serves us how the labels no longer serve us, uh, how the identifications, not even, it's not even that they no longer serve us. We begin to recognize that they're not us, <laughs> that they're not right, us, right? Uh, right. 
when we come in as babies, we don't have any labels. We don't have any identification. Uh, it's determined for us as we move through the process. And that's when we begin to contract because now I can't have you in my circle, right? If I am a Christian, I can't contain uh, you as a Christian, you as a Buddhist, if I am this. Uh, if I am a wealthy, uh, then I must remain in that bubble. Like I can't expand outside of that. You know what, you know what, you just, this just came to my, to my, to mind. You said, you know, we put labels on everything. I am wealthy. I am, yeah. you know, uh, middle class. I am white. I am black. I am Asian. I am uh, a career person. I am a stay at home mom. We put all these labels, but when you get down to it, I am. Yes. Meaning we're everything. There is no separation. There are no labels. Let's forget everything that comes after I am because I am. And that's why, you know, in the biblically it said, I am that I am. Yes. It's everything in and of everything. It is the wormhole that is in is and yes. of itself. That's exactly it. I am. That am. is everything that you need to know about what who you are. <laughs> it's right, right. there. And uh, as we move through this process of expansion, like I said, the heart starts to you know the heart contracts, and then something happens. And uh, more often than not. Uh, the beginning of this process is for us. Like in my case, uh, when it first happened for me, it was because I was suicidal. Uh, my life was in shambles, to say the least. And I was quite frankly tired of living on this planet. Uh, and so in that desperation, in my desperation to want something better for myself, uh, that is when I finally uh, said, okay, Whatever is happening here, do something, you know, uh, and that awakened that in me. Uh, Annette has a question. Was that Moses? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Annette, that was Moses. God told Moses to go to the Pharaoh and said, let my people go, I believe. And yeah. he said, well, who should I tell him sent me? And he said, I am that I am. Yes. And that's where that's where that thing is probably first mentioned in the Bible. Um, and so, yeah, so I had this process of for myself. I wanted something better for myself. I wanted love for myself because I had never known it. I didn't know that's what I was looking for uh, until it came, right? Uh, so it was for me. And more often than not, that's what happens. Uh, we want something different in our life. We want something to change. We want to attain something, right? And then that allows the divine to you know, open that up. And then we begin this, this uh, process of expanding if we will stay with it and we expand and we expand and suddenly our understanding begins to change if we will continue this expansion. Uh, and then eventually we realize that this isn't for us at all. We, we realize that this isn't for us at all. Uh, suddenly we realize, oh, this is for the greater. This is for my family. Uh, this is for the people I love and I care about. And then as we continue to expand through that, we go, oh, wait, no, uh, this is for the planet. Like this is for, oh, wait, let me expand some more. This is for the entire universe. <laughs> oh, wait, this is for the divine. This is for the oneness in and of itself. It's all of that. And that is what happens as we continue to allow ourselves to move through this expansiveness, we begin to understand that it is not about us at all, <laughs> that it is about right. something so much greater, all things, and it's about the I am. It's about the I am, uh, if we will allow it to occur. And, and how do we allow this expansiveness? How does, it, how does it happen and why, right? Everything that happens to us, every, every, everything, that happens to us is strictly designed, beautifully, perfectly, intricately designed to move us towards this expansion, to allow us to engage in this expansion if we will allow that to occur. Our conditioning tells us, our conditioning determines for us how we view any situation. Um, that comes into our lives. Because you, when I say that, I can hear people thinking, everything? Like some of this crap that I've had to deal with? How is that designed to help me expand? Uh, my immediate reaction is to contract. Of course it is, because that's what our conditioning has done for us, right? So once we can understand that and bring that into our conscious awareness, then we can uh, consider 
the possibility that these things have actually been designed for our expansiveness and our moving into oneness. And how can they cause that to happen? If we are able to keep our hearts open, no matter what is happening outside and around us, then that allows that expansion to continue and to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the way that we can uh, accomplish that, or it's a practice, this is a practice. Uh, so the way that we practice that, uh, one of the things that I have learned to do when I'm in the space of wanting to contract, and for a while, we probably will. I know I did. I felt the expansion and then something happened and I, and I didn't even know that's what was happening, right? I just knew I was in this great, wonderful place that felt good and then circumstances would change and I would contract. Then I didn't feel good and things weren't so good. Right. And my perspective right. wasn't so good. And it, nine times out of 10 would happen that way because whatever was going on outside of my expansiveness, I had determined was uh, bad, was awful was painful. I didn't want it. So you see, when we resist these things that happen, resistance automatically causes contraction. Um, one of my first lessons in this, without my knowing it, was Lamaze class. <laughs> and yeah. I took Lamaze class because back then I was a bit of a control freak. And I knew that unless I understood what was happening with my body, it was not gonna go well. But one of the things that they teach you in Lamaze is how to breathe. They teach you how to breathe and relax. Uh, and what I learned in Lamaze is that when we relax, it allows our body to be more open to the pain, which decreases the sensation of pain in our body. And as we breathe, it allows the oxygen to come into our body, which also allows our muscles to work because labor is actually working for us and not against us. And so in this spiritual expansion and contraction and expansion and contraction, the principle works very well if we can learn to relax into the experience and breathe. You see, whatever emotion we are experiencing is energy. It's energy and it's information. Uh, sometimes the information is for us to actually physically act. Sometimes it's just information to let us know where we're at in this expansive and contraction process. So if we can just work with it, uh, embrace it, allow it to come into our experience, relax into it and breathe. Let me just breathe through that emotion and let me allow it to cause a deeper, uh, not a deeper, a broader, more expansive thing to occur for me in my life. Uh, and that's one of the ways that we can uh, help ourselves as we're going through this process. And what happens is as we relax and we're present with it, what happens is we begin to see it from a different perspective. Uh, I remember when I was first learning how to do this, I had uh, something occur in my life that seemed catastrophic. Uh, I was flying high. I was doing great. And suddenly this thing that my mind determined and was catastrophic, that my conditioning told me should be catastrophic, uh, took the wind out of me. And I kept hearing my guide say, we need you to see this from a higher perspective. And I kept thinking, what are you talking about? What do you mean this higher perspective? Um, but I kept working with it. I kept moving into it and, and uh, sitting with it and breathing through it and relaxing into it. And it was this, it was this thing for a long time until finally I got it. And I looked down and, and I, the analogy that I gave was it was like being initially when it happened, it was like being in this field of weeds and I was lost in this big cornfield and I couldn't find like a maze. I couldn't find my way out and I didn't like it and it didn't make sense and it was scary. But once I got that higher perspective and it's not about being higher, right? It's not about that. It's really about the expansiveness, a more expansive perspective. Because if we can expand in our thinking, that allows more opportunity for an expanded experience. So it wasn't that I moved higher. It was that my perspective expanded. And as my perspective expanded, it was like flying over this beautiful crop circle now. And I looked down and could see this beautiful intentional pattern that had occurred. And I was like, oh my gosh, this was this is beautiful. It, to me, in, in where I was at before, I couldn't see the whole of it. Um, but once I moved to that other expansion, I was able to see. Jeremy, how are you, Jeremy? I love you, brother. 
Um, how can I be one with a person who adheres to a philosophy that I cannot agree with? I'm obliged to still love them, but we cannot be one. Ah, you see, that's the beauty of it. Regardless of what philosophies uh, and our uh, thinkings are all conditioning. That's part of this human experience uh, that we sometimes need to develop our identity and our ego. You see, our ego serves a purpose. It actually serves a purpose. And as we move through this expansive process, all of the philosophy, all of the belief systems, all of the obligation uh, dissipates. It all begins to dissipate. Um, is it a matter of releasing yourself to the higher perspective? Um, you could put it that way, Annette. I would say more than releasing, it is, it is, it is uh, allowing. It is allowing. Um, it, because releasing still indicates that we're holding on to something, right? So it's, and there's nothing wrong with releasing. I, I'm speaking from what has helped me. I love you too, Jeremy. It is this allowing, and as we allow, uh, as we allow all that needs to fall away, falls away on its own. That's the beauty of it. Uh, it happens on its own. Yeah. So what I what I'd like to uh, to give an analogy to this. You know, every every single person's philosophy, their opinions, everything is necessary for the whole. Yeah. So like, that is like the one way you can have you can find compassion for somebody. Or you can go, okay, it's necessary to some extent. So I'm going to say once again, and we've said this many times, I think, when you and I have been talking, I may not agree with our current politics that are going on with the country. I may not, I absolutely don't agree with the, the person who we call president. However, he's necessary because he is awakening oneness. He is bringing us together from uh, uh, those of us who believe in oneness, those of us who have a spiritual sensibility about us. We're going, no, not this. And we're coming together and where we have students out of Florida that are fighting that are standing up saying, no, we don't want this anymore. And they're fighting from a stance of love. We have, we have different cultures coming together. We're saying no borders. We're being reminded of what's important. And the oneness consciousness is anchoring in because of it. The divine feminine is anchoring in because of it, because we're being more aware of it. So you can have compassion as somebody say, you know what, that is their truth. That's their truth. It's necessary for the whole, but I can love them but allow them to go on their way where I don't have to be brother and sister with them. I don't have to be shoulder to shoulder with them, but I can still love them, respect them on all different levels and go, thank you for the way that you believe. Thank you for the way that you're going down your path because it's also necessary for the whole. Yes. That's how we can do it. Yes, yes. You see this, this process, this keep, this is the part that is keeping our heart open. Thank you, Tricia. Yes. That's very practical uh, guidance and how we keep our heart open through this process. The expansiveness is coming out of our heart. The expansiveness is coming out of our heart. And so we want to keep that heart open throughout this process because uh, in my experience, the heart expansion is the doorway to consciousness. It is the doorway to the oneness. Our ability to keep our hearts open is the doorway to that expansion and oneness. Um, Annette says it's so hard political, politically wise. I have to limit what I allow in. Uh, yes, because I cannot welcome yes. them. To be, yes, 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 absolutely. And here's the reality. As we continue in this expansive process, we find that we're less interested. Uh, we're less we are not of this world. We are what Jesus said. When he said, I am not of this world, I get it. I am no law. As I've moved through this process, I recognize I am not of this world. Not that I'm not in it, but I am right. not of this world. Right. We're in it, but we're not of it. And the we're whole thing is it. with politics, I got to tell you, to me, it's a facade. It's just a facade to because everything is spiritual everything is spiritual everything. every physical issue is a spiritual everything. issue everything. so if you can turn that off and go it really doesn't matter whatever's yes. going to happen is going to happen my job is to keep myself healed to be responsible for my own energy and the energy that i allow around me so i can help heal the consciousness therefore it will heal the world yes 
And that's the beauty of it, as we individually engage in this expansiveness. I think last time I used the analogy of an amoeba, and we expand, and when we start to draw others that start to come in, it's like that baby again. You see, it's like that baby again. There's something different, um, as you mentioned, Tricia, and, and all of us on Sacred Uprising, that there's something different, right? There's, a, there's, a, there's an energy that flows out uh, that is uh, uh, fascinating uh, for some people at some level. It's the same thing, because what's happening is, is that expansiveness is being materialized uh, in the natural. And so that's what happens. We expand and more people are drawn into this expansion and we expand and more people are drawn into this expansion and it keeps, and then that's when we realize, oh my gosh, like everyone this is open to and everyone is who we want to come into this because we're all one. We're all, we're, we're all one, you know? And so it begins, it just begins to happen. And um, I want to go back to the, the void that I mentioned before, because we're talking about people's beliefs and their philosophies and how we love them with that and, and recognize our oneness. It's in that void that it's best possible because uh, that void, uh, like I said, everything comes out of it. But what, uh, according to Buddhist tradition, is beautiful about this void is that it is the seed of uh, just allowing it is the seat of recognizing that everything is perfectly placed and everything is perfectly designed so that everything can come perfectly back to oneness and to void, like everything. And so the more we expand and move in, uh, the easier it is to just allow, to just allow and to love and to, as you said, recognize that it is necessary each part of the journey, whatever part of the journey any individual is on, that part is designed specifically for them and is necessary for their individual progression into oneness, which is necessary for our collective progression into oneness. So as we individually begin to understand that, it provides more opportunity and space for others to have their own experience, their own philosophy, their own whatever they need in order for them to come to that space. And we are able to allow that uh, without, this is the other thing about this Buddhist belief, we're able to allow that without interruption. In other words, right. without our interference, uh, specifically the void is that. And that's where this expansiveness begins to take us. It begins to take us there. Uh, and we can just do this by simply uh, allowing the process to occur. You see, uh, I mentioned our conditioning. And when situations that come up in our life that we have been told, because really we have been, ha had we not been told something. You ever notice when a child will hurt themselves, a child falls or they skin their knee? Yeah. What do they do? They look up at you. How am I supposed to respond right. to this? Yes, I How am I supposed yeah. to respond? I learned this quickly as a mother. I learned this because with my first child, I would go, oh my gosh, and she'd freak out. Ah! <laughs> right? Right. Well, the, I, the third kid, I was like, let me see what he does with that. <laughs> let me see what he does with that. And more often than not, he would go, he would look at me and he'd see me and he'd go, huh, let's just move on. <laughs> he would move on because I had not told him that he needed to panic or be afraid or be concerned. You know, children will jump. They have such incredible faith because they don't know yet, right? Uh, I remember my kids jumping off of ledges, assuming that I would catch them, even if my back was turned. <laughs> it's, not right, until yeah. they, it's not until they fall that they realize, oh, got to be more protective of myself in this environment, right? And so with our brains, it's the same way. We don't know that a situation is good or bad, except we've been told that it is. Right, we've been told right. it's catastrophic. Yeah. And in, and in our conditional thinking that way, it uh, causes us to then contract out of the situation because we don't want to be in it, out of our bodies, out of the situation. Say what you're going to see. You know, it's interesting. You, that was one of the biggest, or, or I should say one of the first, one of the first spiritual lessons that I learned. But it was, it was a lesson that I had to learn in the 3D. So in 2012, right. single mom. Father was not paying child support. It was very, very difficult. I didn't have enough money to pay the water bill. I paid all my bills, and then my water got shut off, and I had no money to pay it. And I had a friend at the time that said, Trisha, I'll, I'll pay it for you. It was a couple hundred dollars. And I said, no, because I felt that for the first time in my life, I needed to sit yes. and have to go through that for two weeks. 
And I talked to my daughter. I said, this is what's going on. I feel like this is what we need to do. And she said, okay. So I was, I had, uh, um, you know, so it was, it actually became comical how disgusting it became. Okay. So you can only imagine you need water, no water. for everything, right. like dishes, <laughs> to use the washroom, to, you know, to take a bath, whatever it may be. And I didn't have access to that. Mm. And I needed to do all of that. So it became where it was, uh, it became where I was sitting in it because I felt like I needed to wrap it around me. Yeah. I sat in it. My daughter, fortunately, ended up going away for a week. So she only had to deal with it for a week. I had to deal with it for two weeks. And I laughed about it because of the abs how absurd it was. I became comfortable with it going, okay. And when my water finally got turned back on, I was very grateful. Yes. But the thing was, is that who who said that it was a bad? It wasn't comfortable. Okay. Yes, it exactly. wasn't comfortable. It exactly. sucked on so many levels, exactly. but at the same time, it was a wonderful lesson for me to learn to sit, just yes. to sit in the uncomfortableness, to yes. sit in that. So instead of being one that would react and, okay, I'll take money from somebody else. I, yes. And not that that was wrong. I just right. decided it wasn't for me at that time. But yes. instead, I sat in it and said, okay, I'm going to learn how to breathe. I'm going to learn how to sit and be the deer that's looking at you in the headlights. That's not running to the right or to the left or wherever it's running to. It's sitting there and it's observing, it's looking and it's saying, okay, what is this trying to teach me? Yes. And so I learned it on that very 3d level. And now it goes into other, and sometimes I don't, I don't, is there getting it right? I don't think so. It's just a matter of a journey. There are times that I'm not as eloquent as I was then. Um, in fact, right now, in this moment, I'm going through some panics about, you know, things that I'm concerned about, but I'm going, okay, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to transmute this? How am I going to just sit with it, wrap it around me, wrap that fear, that discomfort around me and go, this is mine too. Yeah. This is my, this is mine too. Yeah. And be yes. okay with it. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's in those moments that you find oneness, so you find yes. that there is no right or wrong. You find yes. that everything just is and just be one with it. Even the parts that we don't, that are that are not comfortable, be one with it. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And we, we, we learn this. So I wanna, I want to uh, definitely honor uh, our experiences in this 3D, you know, our human experiences, because I hear people saying, uh, yeah, I went through A, B, C, and D, uh, and, you know, that was very uncomfortable, easy for you to say, you know, to just breathe through that or sit with it. Actually, not easy for, for us to say because it was a difficult process and this process uh, is uncomfortable. And there are some situations where action is necessary, right, where, where you want right. to actually move, right? So we're not saying that. Right. Um, we're not saying that. What we're saying is, is that uh, most of our suffering is optional. Like most of our suffering, right. yes, all of absolutely. it, all of it, honestly. But but I'm gonna, yes. you know, say this: pain is, <laughs> pain is not optional. Suffering, suffering is. is. It's it's all in the conditioning of the mind uh, and what label we have given a situation. When we're able to understand that all of these circumstances, truly, 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 are designed to move us into wholeness, then we can become observers of them versus direct participants. Uh, and this does happen. I, I will. Uh, if you don't go through the uncomfortable in the journey, it's not possible exactly to move forward. Agreed, Annette, exactly. The, the, the whole point of the discomfort is to help us to move forward. Um, and we don't all, it's, and, we, and it's a practice, right? Last Tuesday, I called you and you were like, whoa, your vibration is like completely changed since I last talked to you because I had gotten knocked off my rocker, right? Um, by something. Yeah. And, so, and I knew it, which is why I called to get some backup because I knew it. One of the things that begins to happen as we move through this expansion is we become observers of where we're at and we know. Uh, I can remember like a week ago probably or more, uh, I was having a conversation with someone uh, and I was, you know, I was uh, in that oneness space and then they said something to me about somebody that, I, that immediately rose up the emotion of anger in me and I immediately felt myself move out of, for the first time in my life, I felt it palpably as I was speaking in anger about this situation. My, I was uh, observing going, you just moved out of oneness. I felt it uh, and, and I felt the shift and I went, wow, now I know what it feels like 
So that purpose of that was for me to know what it feels like. So right. now I'm right. conscious when I move out of that and I can quickly now go, ah, or when I'm approaching even, when I'm approaching moving out of that, I can go, oh, what's happening? What's that about? Uh, so that I can maintain this vibration uh, of oneness and capacity, uh, again, because we want to move towards keeping ourselves here so that it provides a gateway for as many others as possible. If we fall out of it, that's okay. We don't judge it. We don't get upset about it. We come to recognizing it consciously. And once we've done that, then we're right back. You know, we're, we're right back. Uh, but every time there's a contraction and an expansion, it is, again, just for us to expand further. Uh, that's the only reason we do it. Uh, and we want to honor honor each time that that happens because it's all uh, integral uh, and important to our continued expansiveness. And we know this is happening, one, because we can feel it. We can feel that we are no longer uh, attached or c attached <laughs> or connected to the mundane. Uh, and I don't say that. Uh, you know, belittling, I say mundane as the literal definition, which is earthly. We right. no longer feel yeah. the, the uh, interest in the earthly. Uh, we no longer uh, have the thinking that we used to have, like our thinking begins to change. Uh, the, there's paradoxes in everything. We begin to have a different perspective on our circumstances and what happens in our lives where other people might go, oh my God, I can't believe you're going through that. And you just sort of go, it's, it's, I understand what's happening. So right. it's part of this process. Right. It doesn't right. mean anything. Right. Right. Like, I, I think it was the Course in Miracles that has one of the uh, tenets is whatever meaning something has is the meaning that I give it. Uh, and that's that whole concept of understanding that uh, we give these things meaning and therefore they have right. meaning. Uh, and so it's under it's, as we move into this expansiveness, we begin to understand that, uh, and it, we begin to understand uh, that it is not just for us, that it is for the collective, and that it is for the I am, that it is actually for the one, which involves all of us, which is one of those great um, paradoxes, um, <laughs> right? Um, thank you, thank Veronica. You so much we for appreciate you. Thank you, everybody yeah, thank here you. that I've seen you. I love you all. Thank you. Um, it's probably about time for us to wrap this discussion up because I could talk about it all day. But um, yes, the, the expansiveness into oneness. We're all here to do it. We can do it. We can help each other through it. Uh, and just know that we love you. I love you. <laughs> There's nothing but love. That's yeah. the whole thing. Everything else is an illusion. There is nothing right. but infinite love. That's right. So that's right. Well, to to get some additional information or further information on Lori, she's she's a soul coach. She's an energy healer. She has so many different beautiful modalities to help you through your expansion and mm -hmm. bring you into the consciousness of oneness. You can go to sacreduprising.com, go to our speakers, and you can click on the link that will allow you to uh, reach out to Lori. Lori, I love you. I'm so, I I, I'm, I'm blown away and I am honored from everything that has been just evolving in your life and how it's been, you've allowed everything, all the beauty that is transpiring to bring you to this more beautiful awareness that can help so many more people. So thank you so much for your surrender to whatever it is. It is so my honor. Thank you. Thank you, Trisha. I love you so much. And thank you for what you are doing. We have that soul. You know, that's why we're connected. Yes, we do. You know? We do. I love you so. Thank you so much. So everybody, uh, tomorrow we do not have any videos tomorrow. However, we will start again on Thursday with Dr. Lisa, and she's talking about living your truth. And then I will be continuing my series, and I know I haven't done it in a while, but um, I'm going to be continuing my series on Calling in the One. So don't miss out on that. Until then, have a blessed week, and Lori, we'll talk to you soon. Yes. All right, bye, bye everybody. Bye, everybody.